So the question today is what is the probability value? What is the p-value? So first I'm going to give you the definition of the p-value and then I'm going to explain the definition. Uh, you have this probability value. It's a value between 0 and 1. And it represents the probability that you would make the observation that you made or a more extreme observation by random error alone if the null hypothesis were true. So let's break this down into its parts. Let's start with the null hypothesis. Let's say that you had a simple experiment you wanted to conduct. You had a special version of cognitive behavioral therapy and you wanted to compare this to existential therapy. So you have a population of people that have a certain type of mental health disorder, let's say depression, and you sample from that population 60 participants and you randomly assign them to the cognitive behavioral therapy, CBT, and the existential therapy. You have 30 in each group. Now you would use an inferential statistic to test a null hypothesis in this case. And the null hypothesis in this case is going to be that there's no difference between the groups. So your CBT treatment is no more or less effective than the existential therapy. The mean score from the CBT group, so you measure depression using a psychometric instrument, you get this mean score. The mean score for CBT will not be different than the mean score for existential. So what we do is we test this null hypothesis with the inferential statistic. Now, in this case, with two groups, we could use a t-test or an ANOVA. Let's say that we use a t-test. We perform the t-test. Among the various outputs that we would get would be this probability value, the p-value. So let's say that the output of the t-test, the probability value, is 0 0.06, or 6%. We would interpret that as 6%. There's a 6% chance, then, that we could have made the observation that we made or a more extreme observation, a larger difference between the means, by random error alone, if in reality there were no difference between the groups. So if the null hypothesis were true. So the question is, what do we do with that probability value? Let's say we have this probability value of 6%. That's the output of the t-test. What do we do with that? Well, it depends on a value we refer to as the alpha value also known as the type 1 error rate. And you set the alpha as the researcher. And typically in the social sciences, we set the alpha at 5%. So the p-value would have to be equal to or less than 5% in order for us to reject the null hypothesis, in order for us to say that the difference between the two groups, we believe, was caused by the treatment and not through random error. Of course, as you can see with this design, you could still have the incorrect finding. You could still reject the null hypothesis even when the null hypothesis was true. You could say there is a difference between these two groups even though there wasn't a difference. That's known as a type 1 error. So the alpha value that we set, that 5%, is the same thing as the type 1 error rate. You have a 5% chance of rejecting the null hypothesis when it was actually true. So the next question becomes, is this a good system? Well, this is how we test hypotheses. And it's a system that's been around for quite some time. That doesn't really answer the question, is it a good system? There's arguments on both sides. I guess it does become a little uh, confusing when you get, say, an alpha, you use an alpha, rather, of 0 0.05, and you get a probability value of 0 0.051 and say another experiment is run at the same time with another therapy and you get a p-value with that with those two groups when you run the say t-test of 0 0.049 there's only a 0 0.002 difference between those two values so one would be called statistically significant the one that was 0 0.049 or 4.9 percent would be statistically significant we would reject the null hypothesis in the case of the 0 0.051 we would fail to reject the null hypothesis and we would say there is no difference between the groups. So this becomes kind of an issue uh, that's debated. Is this a good system where you could have values so close to alpha and the findings like the 0 0.051 findings, those would be thrown out. In theory they most likely wouldn't be published. You, you found that uh, nothing really happened, there was no difference. 
whereas the point zero four four nine, you would probably submit that for publication. Uh, some uh, people recommend just interpreting the p-value as it is and letting the reader decide if it's important or not. Uh, the other part of this, though, with the p-value is really the effect size. So you have another construct called the effect size. And the p-value tells you if you can reject the null hypothesis or not. The effect size tells you how important the finding is. So I do like the current system with probability value uh, in the social sciences using 5%. I'm okay with that. But I would say focus more on the effect size. That's where we get to find out how important the difference is. It measures the magnitude of the difference. Say, using the example of the CBT group and the existential group. It's the magnitude difference that's reported through the effect size. Another important point with p-value is that when you have larger samples, you're more likely to have a statistically significant result. So again, it's the same caution. Uh, when you have large sample sizes, you know you're probably going to find statistical significance. That doesn't mean the difference that you observed is important. It just means that you can reject the null hypothesis that there's no difference between the groups. I hope that was helpful. Thanks for watching.